Is the Atomos Ninja Flame still a good buy? The 7-inch 10-bit 4K HDR recorder from 2017 packs a lot of features at a time when the latest gear can be expensive or even difficult to get your hands on. Let's look at those features and see how it stacks up today. Join the crew on Patreon. There's an awesome new sticker that only crew members can get. Details are linked below. Leave a like and share this video if you can. We looked at the Ninja 5 previously in video 182 linked below, and if you've been shopping for one recently, you'll have noticed that the sale prices you saw before are not always available. Beyond prices moving around constantly, fully kitting out any external recorder with accessories can add up too. You really just need an SSD and an HDMI cable to get started with the Ninja 5, but you will want some batteries too, probably, and then you'll want a charger for them and additional drives and the Atomos caddies for those drives. Uh, the drive reader or dock is really handy to have, and you'll want a way to mount the recorder as well. And if you plan on taking this stuff out and using it, you'll definitely be looking at a hard case. That's a lot of extras to budget for, assuming you don't splurge for the proprietary Atomos SSDs that fit the Ninja 5 specifically without hanging out over the end. So regardless of your budget, saving a few dollars if you can would probably be attractive. You might be wondering if there are any similar recorders that might be a little less expensive and if there's a different way to go about all of this. And right now there are a lot of Ninja Flame and Inferno models on the used market and some of them even come with all of the accessories you're gonna need thrown in. So what's the deal? How are they different? The biggest difference is recording in ProRes RAW. If that's important to you, you'll definitely need to go with the Ninja 5 or one of the newer Shogun models for sure. If ProRes LT, 422, or HQ are good enough for your workflow, along with other DNX HR options, then you might be a good candidate for the Flame or Inferno. You'll also notice that the Ninja 5 has space only for a single battery in the rear, and if you want to power the unit from wall power or a power distribution system, you'll have to use a dummy battery to connect to that same slot. The 7 inch Flame and Inferno models, however, both have dual battery slots that are hot swappable in use. The unit will run on a single battery just fine or on DC provided through the barrel jack anywhere between 6.2 and 16.8 volts. It's a common 2.2 millimeter center positive barrel jack arrangement here, making it very easy to set up with almost any battery solution that you might have on hand. You also get the option to prioritize where the unit sources power from and to use the connected batteries first and then fail over to the DC barrel jack when those run out or the other way around. And that is a huge difference over the Ninja 5 for anybody that is concerned about powering these units and having multiple ways to do that redundantly. What about the Flame and the Inferno though? How do they differ from one another since they look almost identical? The big difference is the flame here tops out at 4K UHD, which is 3840 by 2160, while the Inferno takes us up to 4K DCI, or 4096 by 2160 uh, digital cinema spec at a maximum of 60 frames per second. The more attractive spec to me would be the 60 frames per second in 4K, but going to DCI from the UHD 4K could be more attractive to some folks depending on what you're doing. Both units record up to 120 frames per second in 1080p also, as well as other common assorted resolutions. You should be aware though, that many cameras like this Sony a6500 that I'm shooting with right now can only output a maximum of 60 frames per second on the HDMI port. So be sure that your source is capable of outputting whatever spec you're planning to record to on these units. You'd be surprised how often that catches people out. Other than that, the only physical difference is the Inferno has a locking multi-pin Limo audio connector and can provide 48 volt phantom power to two channels over the mic inputs there. The Flame only has a 3.5 millimeter input jack for audio and no phantom power. Now that could be a big advantage to have onboard phantom power in those mic pre's for certain setups, but if it's not something you'll use, the 3.5 millimeter jack is quite handy for plugging in other gear and more consumer grade gear on the go. 
Both units will record eight tracks of audio if you have audio embedded in the HDMI signal coming in. Both record 10-bit 422 in ProRes LT. 422 or HQ. So again, if you're looking to get into ProRes RAW, you will need to look at the Ninja 5 or one of those Shogun models. Other minor differences to note, you'll need to budget for an HDMI 1.4B or better cable for the flame, while the Inferno uses HDMI 2.0. The max power consumption of the flame is only 24 watts, while the Inferno max jumps up to 34, and I would assume that that would be with that phantom power engaged. Both units average about the same power consumption in typical use. Some more similarities with the Flame and the Inferno is both feature a ton of handy tools and overlays. They both have a time-lapse mode as well as anamorphic modes. Both units feature the Atom 4K HDR mode that lets you view log profile footage much easier in real time as well as the ability to use custom LUTs that you can load into the unit. They both are LANC remote compatible, both have dual NPF battery slots, they both record those eight channels of embedded audio from the HDMI input, and they both have the same 8-bit touch display. All of these Atomos units use the same SSD media and caddies that fit flush into the 7-inch units, something that I really prefer over the Ninja 5 where they hung over the edge unless you bought those more expensive Atomos uh, drives. I use SanDisk Ultra Drives in both 500 gigabyte and one terabyte sizes, which comes out to just under four hours of 4K recording on a terabyte drive in ProRes 422. These all have the same simple user interface that will be familiar to you if you've used anything from Atomos before. Whenever showing somebody one of these for the first time, my best advice to them usually is if you want to adjust something, just touch it on the screen. Meaning if you want to adjust audio levels, just touch the audio meters. If you're curious about battery levels and settings, touch the battery icon. If you're interested in what your input is set to, touch where it says HDMI. It's pretty simple and most people figure it out pretty quickly from there. Both of these units are incredibly light, coming in at just over a kilogram with the battery and drive installed, and only 0.65 of a kilogram on its own or just under one and a half pounds. Compared to the newer Ninja 5, the Flame does have the bigger 7-inch screen, which is brighter as well, which is really nice. They have a mode just for being outdoors in bright daylight to amp that screen up really bright so you can still see what you're doing. Although this one is a lower pixel per inch density at 325 versus the Ninja 5's 423. Again, depending on what you're doing and where and how you're going to be using these external recorders, either one might suit you very well. For a documentary or interview series or content that's going to be delivered exclusively online uh, for web distribution, 4K 30 or 60p in ProRes 422 might be all you need. The resources that working with 4K ProRes RAW requires are beyond the projects that I work on right now, honestly. I'm happy to shoot at 1080 for anything that I need to go to 60 or 120 frames per second. Although with this camera, I do have to shoot internally if I want to go over that 60 frames per second, like I mentioned before. Still though, on a budget, which this video is all about, you can get a lot done with a combo like this. What I'm looking for is really solid ProRes recording with a good amount of flexibility. And if you do need those higher frame rates, if they're really important to the work you're doing, you can go to the Inferno, which isn't that much more expensive now than this flame on the used market. If you're not in a huge rush, at the time of filming, there are a number of used sets all over the used market for either the Flame or the Inferno, along with a number of batteries, cases, chargers, hard drives, all that kind of stuff for less than the price of just the Ninja 5 on its own. So it's definitely something to consider if you're not shooting ProRes RAW. If that's something you're looking to work towards, maybe go ahead with the Ninja 5 or the Shoguns are a really good value as well, especially if you have multiple inputs, the Shogun that you can plug in multiple inputs to is a really, really good deal. For anybody that's not getting into raw recording though, the Ninja Flame and Inferno are really good options. Both are available with a ton of accessories for almost any budget. You can just get the unit on its own for really cheap now if you've already got drives and other stuff on hand. And you can get into 4K DCI recording with the Inferno for pretty ridiculously low prices right now. 
So let me know what you think. Would you still buy the Ninja Flame or Inferno in 2021 or whenever you're watching this video? I'd love to hear why you would or why you wouldn't or what you'd get instead that would be a better value for the money. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.